Member for York East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my great pleasure to be the first person to ask the new Minister of Housing a question this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, my question is, there are many older apartments in Ontario that would benefit by being covered by the new building code standards. Gary Malkowski is considered a hero, a legend to many deaf youth in our community. Many children want to grow up to be just like him. As a youth, Gary struggled through the hearing educational system. As a young adult, he entered Gallaudet University and graduated with a degree. During his time there, he was exposed to many issues of language equality and access to communication. Recognizing that the same issues existed here, Gary decided to fight for deaf rights in Ontario. He was elected as a member of provincial parliament and was instrumental in establishing interpretation services, flashing alarm systems, and real-time captioning at Queen's Park. I recently had the opportunity to meet Gary at his office at the Canadian Hearing Society in Toronto. Gary, given your experiences growing up and as an activist, tell me what advice you would give to members of the deaf community. What I think is really important is that mentorship programs need to be established for all levels and all age groups. We should be starting with young deaf children with a kind of big brother, big sister program. I think that would be really beneficial to teach deaf children to become self-advocates and to teach them how they can be agents of change. I think that's key for them to understand their civil responsibilities. Then I think a youth program needs to be in place so that you can see how kids move towards successful changes and how they can be accountable and responsible. I myself certainly have done some of that mentoring. There have been deaf people that I've brought on board to work with me on work experience, summer programs, part-time programs, and things of that nature. I've tried to provide some of that mentorship and that support. That is key. Mentorship needs to be expanded. Organizations that provide services to the deaf, like the Ontario Association of the Deaf, the Canadian Association of the Deaf, the Canadian Hearing Society, and Silent Voice, need to be setting up mentorship programs as well for deaf, deafened, and hard of hearing people so that they have that opportunity to grow. Giving people experience, expanding their confidence, giving them better ideas of how to grow and gain those opportunities to learn. I really believe that mentorship is one of the most important parts of the foundation. It's a tool that can really be used for effective change and for success. Gary mentioned mentorship programs. Do you feel those are important? I feel mentorship programs are very important because they help strengthen leadership skills, they help influence deaf youth, gives them an idea of what they can be when they grow up, makes them think more about their future goals. Yes, I believe they're very important. If you're interested in contacting Gary, contact him at www.chs.ca. You'll find on that website many other links to very interesting and helpful deaf information. Before we go, I'm curious, Enza, who has your role model been? Well, the person I most looked up to was a teacher I had in high school at the School for the Deaf. He encouraged me to go to Gallaudet University. And not only did I attend, I also graduated with a degree. I have a lot to thank him for. How about you? I'd have to say my role model is Phyllis Freelich. She's a deaf actor and the first one ever seen on TV and she has really fed my dream and my belief that I can do it too. I hope you enjoyed the last half hour and thank you for watching Deaf TV.